Welcome to part one of uh, creating Link's shield from Ocarina of Time. Here's a picture of what we're going to be trying to create. And to get started, my uh, son and I uh, created a mock-up of the size and uh, that we wanted to use to fit him well. And here's a picture of that. And from there, uh, we are going to jump into this project. Okay, I want to start out by showing how to make the uh, the form that we're going to use to put a bend in the uh, the shield. And uh, so what I wanted to do is I like cutting uh, uh, reoccurring shapes. I got to cut a lot of them out of with uh, by making a pattern and then uh, <clears throat> using a flush trim bit to uh, route each piece. Uh, exactly the same. So I started out by making a, um, a pattern. I started with some quarter inch ply, but uh, ended up actually using the pattern that I made to make another one that was half inch thick. Just it wasn't, the quarter inch wasn't working very well with the plus trim bit that I have. Um, but so the uh, dimensions on this, let's see, it's about 18 to 3 sixteenths by three inches tall. And what I have done is I just created really quickly uh, <coughs> uh, a compass with my router um, and uh, screwed a pivot point down here and don't, uh, oh wait, I do remember uh, the actual uh, uh, radius here to make this specific arc was 68.4 centimeters. I was using uh, metric for that. So, uh, and then uh, I did. I found my uh, the my center point, <clears throat> which would be the you know, the actual 68.4, which is the furthest point from the pivot point to my router bit. Um, I wanted a little bit of a relief here. We'll see later on why I wanted to do that rather than just cutting it straight across the arc <clears throat> and then to get this uh actually uses double-sided tape um let's see placed it down here and ran the router again swiveling on the pivot point there to get the arc that i wanted and i got that which eventually i just used to step it up to a half inch uh, piece of plywood um, all right, so once I had this, uh, I could uh, use that to cut blanks. So I have the blanks. Uh, I use that, and then I, I tried to uh, <clears throat> turn away some of the excess, so my router didn't have to work and have to take quite as much out. Um, this is I just used particle board for this so cheap stuff I had left over. From some other project, and uh, um, so we'll take a look at that in just a second. <clears throat> so all I did was take my pattern, so now that I have the pattern, I just took it, and there's my blank, <clears throat> and since I'm not worried about the face of the pieces that I'm um, cutting with the pattern. I'm just going to screw these directly to the to the blank piece. I've got that screwed onto there. Now I'll be able to run my flush trim bit uh, along my pattern to get a duplicate. So let's break and take a look at that. Okay, so I've got my blank now and I've got my flush trim bit in here. Um, the bearings at the bottom, so it's going to run along uh, my pattern there. You can see. And uh, all I need to do is uh, route that real quick. So 
Let's see. Alright, this next part is just showing uh, the form. I cut the audio because the uh, battery ran out and ended up running short. But you can see all the ribs have been screwed down. I reinforced the ends with two of them. And then on the side, I created a little lip, a little ledge that was about a little over a half inch thick so that I could slip my uh, two blank pieces, which are two quarter inch pieces of plywood, so just underneath it so that it would give me a, a head start on being able to pull the other side, the opposite side down uh, with the clamps. And we'll see that coming up in this next part. So you can see the ledge there. Um, so here, my son and I are gluing up the pieces. Um, sped this up quite a bit because it, it took quite a while just to get all the glue and everything in place and get the clamping down. So we just put some pieces down to try to help protect the interior of the of the uh, plywood. And you can see we're just using some uh, tie-down straps and just kind of taking it slow. Um, and to slowly work it down. With the straps we will get it fairly close. But then uh, we needed to go ahead and uh, go get some uh, some other uh, wood clamps to help uh, clamp it down the rest of the way. So that's what we're doing here, uh, pulling down the uh, pulling it down even further, uh, clamping it right under the ribs for the extra support there. And let's see, yeah. So we went around, clamped all the ribs, pulled down all the edges. Nice and tight, and that was about it. Alright, so here we go. Uh, we're pull this is the next day. We're pulling the clamps off. Nothing fancy here. Just get everything prepped. So we sped this up a little bit. Um, it took our time. Uh, you can see it bounced back from the form some. The, I still like the curvature that I was getting. I did overcompensate a little bit to begin with. So that uh, I figured there'd be some uh, bounce back a little bit. Yeah. here this beautiful crafted sort of curved piece of wood um, it will be our shield when we cut it out like this will be the trim will be to this to this you know on there so I'm gonna trace it I'm gonna trace we're gonna print out a piece of paper trace it and then cut it cut off the um, excess parts and then we're gonna put on the then we're gonna put on the all the fancy schmaz and then well before we're gonna do that we're gonna take some fiberglass lay it over there and yeah make it strong I don't know if we'll need to do that okay. And we'll be back in part two to start cutting things out. Thanks for watching.